to go live. Hello, welcome. <laughs> this is my first broadcast of 2022. I, I meant to uh, come back from my break and hit the ground running and just like get stuff done. But instead, I got COVID. Yay. So I have COVID right now. Um, so I don't have a lot of energy and I'm really spacey. <laughs> But I thought, that's okay. I'll just pull out one of my old broadcasts and do that. But then I go back and I look at it and I'm like, I hate this. And then I have to fix it. So anyway, so this is an old new broadcast, a new version of an old broadcast today. Um, but it was, a, it was a good one, an oldie but a goodie. So that's what we're doing today. And when I'm done working today, I'm going to binge on Netflix and just sit there because that's what I feel like doing. Anyway, so today we are going to talk about the thing I dusted off is stage fright, which is really common, a very common thing. And it can it really interfere with our joy of singing and of performing. Am I on? Yes. So I'm going to offer you five really good ways to deal with it after we talk about what it is a little bit. And also to help your students deal with it. Because, you know, even if you don't have it, they might. So, so you first. But you first. You are a singer. And, and because you are a singer, you have performed on stage in front of people. And you, you might be one of those people for whom that's really exciting and really fun. Or you might be one of those people who just bites the leather strap and just does it, even though it's really scary. Um, but if you're one of those people who likes performing, you might associate time on stage with, um, you know, having all eyes upon you, right? People paying attention to you as a good thing. You might perceive it that way. And if you are, you are probably the proud owner of an evolved neurological modality, which is called hedonic. The hedonic modality is a mechanism for social relating. And what you what that means is that even when you're on stage, you still know that you're part of a team. You perceive yourself as part of a team. You are not threatened by calling attention to yourself. The other side of that same coin is a modality for social relating, which is called agonic. Where is it? Do I have that? Well, uh, maybe I'll pull it up later. Anyway, which means that you're on stage and people are looking at you and you are perceiving the others as hostile dominance. Hostile dominance. That's a thing. So other, other beings who do not have your best interests in mind. So if your brain defaults to that agonic modality, it tells you that the sea of faces that is staring at you are presenting a dangerous situation. These, these are hostile dominance and they might want to harm you or take your stuff. If you are in that modality, no wonder, no wonder you have stage fright. Am I right? So today we're going to look at stage fright through the lens of evolution just a little bit. I know there are many ways to talk about stage fright. I am aware of that. Today we're going to talk evolution and I'm going to offer you some tools that will help you. And if you need it, well, help you if you need it and your students who will most certainly need it. Also, if you can't hear me, will you please let me know because I can't talk very loud today. <laughs> I my, I have my, my microphone high because I just am not moving a lot of air. Anyway, so I am Meredith Colby and I support voice teachers to create confident teaching and singing of popular styles, microphone-based styles. I bring information to teachers through media platforms and classes to help them fill in the gaps in their learning so that they can effectively and lovingly help their students find their true voices. And in doing that, create a prosperous voice business. I am the author of Money Notes, How to Sing High, Loud, Healthy, and Forever. Wait, it's that way. Uh, which introduces neurovocal method, a way to understand singing, a way to teach popular singing or to sing popular styles <laughs> in a healthy way based on brain science. So if you are on my mailing list, you probably already know this, but the next neurovocal method certification 
course begins on March 3rd, and there's still room for you to join that class. So actually, there are two sections of it for each hemisphere. <laughs> I did a section for each hemisphere of the globe. So for the next month, there's still the um, $200 off the early bird special. And if you're on my mailing list, you will get a code for an extra $50 off. So if you guys, if you want to feel confident about your teaching of popular styles, make this the year to deal with that. Don't feel bad any longer than you have to. This class is such an amazing value. And I'm, I'm not going to teach you anything you can't use right away. So no fancy sciencey stuff that you're like, okay, and what do I do with that in my studio? We're not doing that. You, you're going to actually apply the things that you learn right away. The whole class is formatted to give you confidence in teaching popular styles. So you learn a thing and then you go in the studio that week and you try the thing. When you understand the principles, then you can add your own little teaching mojo, your own teaching artistry to them and just really be able to meet every student where they are. So whether you're a classically trained singer or you are a singer of microphone styles, this is a great class for you. And it's one of the best values. I mean, I, I, now I've been around the block a little bit. I have to say this is one of the best values in professional development out there. So even without the discount, and there's a discount. So head on over to my site and get that information. So today, I would like you to love for you to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments if you're here or, or later on the replay if you want to. If something resonates with you, give it a heart, give it a thumbs up. That always helps. Um, doesn't It doesn't seem like much, but it really helps me a lot and I appreciate it when you do that. If you are um, watching on YouTube, then be sure to like and follow. So my freebie today is an article called Stage Right, the neuroscience of why and five hacks to defeat it. If you want that link, put stage fright in the chat and the neurovocal bot will send you that link. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll find the link in the comments below. So actually the stuff we're talking about today will all be in that, um, that article, that blog post. So there, there, <laughs> it's like show notes. So hi, Wendy. Good. I'm glad you're here. So let's talk evolution. Wendy, you're right on time for evolution. Evolution is the process by which genetic information that makes survival more likely gets passed from one generation to the next. So for instance, human beings speak to one another. Speech is one of those things that have made us an overwhelmingly successful species. One of the reasons we can speak is because, oh, 350,000 years ago, give or take, some of our ancestors had a larynx and a hyoid bone that was lower in their throats. They survived. Their neighbors with the high larynx of our ape cousins did not. So the ability to create sounds for communication, those sounds which will become speech, allowed certain individuals to live and thus pass on their DNA. That kind of communication turned out to be a desirable trait for survival. <laughs> and still is to this very day. <laughs> Evolution favored those individuals. Wait, I just went 350,000 years ago. Again, evolution favored those individuals who had the higher hyoid bone. They got to survive and they got to pass on their DNA. And there you go. So what does all that have to do with stage fright? You may be asking. <laughs> well, so try this on for size. Humans are social animals like wolves, like bees, dolphins, our, our survival as individuals historically has depended on our success as a community. So what if you perceive your community as your enemy in certain situations? Neurologically, that can happen. That happens with stage fright. In a minute, we're going to look at the five hacks for stage fright that I promised. And um, the article, I will put this up one more time. Um, if you put stage fright in the chat, you'll get that article. And also just FYI, there are a lot of 
um, people, a lot of our colleagues who deal with stage fright specifically and performance anxiety specifically. Petra Borzinski in Glasgow is a wonderful resource for all things stage fright. So I am not, that is not my area of expertise, but I do find it interesting. So that's why I'm sharing what I do have today. And um, if you if you are struggling with stage fright, be sure and seek out one of these individuals for whom it is their area of expertise. Um, if working with stage fright is their jam, <laughs> that's who you want. Um, if you want Petra's information, do let me know. I will put that. Actually, I'll just put her her information in the link in the comments below. So an interesting research project project that is in today's freebie, by the way, from the clinic, from a clinical study, the clinical study review. There we go. That's the name of it. Posits that, no, that's not right. Okay. Let's try again. The, the document, see, I can't think right now. The document is called the clinical psychology review. It is a professional journal. There is a study in that journal from, I can't remember the year right now, and I didn't write it down, but it posits that social anxiety may have originated as a survival response to hostile dominance, hostile dominance. So here's the thing. If you perceive your audience as hostile dominance, not your fault, just a neurological modality, it can trigger feelings of avoidance, of submissive behavior. It can make you want to run away and escape. It's called an agonic modality. I actually wrote that down so you could see it. There's the word. Agonic or agonic modality. Your monkey brain may be perceiving your audience as a group who is out to get you, you and your bananas. <laughs> Your perception or even your anticipation of that perception can trigger your fight or flight response. Now, that's where the fight or flight, which you've, you've all, everybody's heard about that. It's where your sympathetic nervous system kicks in to make your body do the things that will keep you alive in a threatening situation. So you get scared, your digestive system shuts down. That's why you have dry mouth when you are on stage and scared, right? You have, your, your heart rate increases, your blood flow increases. You, you might experience shaky limbs or even dizziness. It becomes more oxygen in the blood. All these like, I'm, I'm getting ready to run away and save my own life. So if this happens to you, I do not, I am not the one to tell you that once this process begins, it tends to stimulate a feedback loop with your thoughts. If you've had it, you, you, you know, I'm right. I mean, you're like, yeah, duh. But those symptoms take all of your attention, right? You're just like, oh, my heart is beating so fast. And whether you're trying to talk yourself out of them or simply focus on it, focusing on them, they stay the same or they get worse because you're focusing on them. Now you can, people can, people have and have learned to extricate themselves from that feedback loop but it's not easy. It takes dedication. It takes practice. So what do you do? If your agonic neurological tendency has taken over and you are perceiving your audience as hostile dominants who want to steal your bananas, um, and <laughs> like bananas, I'm not sure all monkeys have bananas. Um, but now your sympathetic nervous system is all geared up to save your life from your audience. So what's the answer? Well, first, I hope I've given you a way to look at your stage fright that may be helpful to you or your students, that it's it's not really anybody's fault. It's not a psychological um, you know, problem or something that you should be doing differently. It's not just a, if I can just be logical about this, it's not like that. So I, I hope that I've given you something that lets you be a little um, gentler with yourself and with your students. But based on this perspective, I'm going to throw out some uh, five ideas for addressing stage fright. And they are also in the article that you can get by putting stage fright, there it is again, in the chat. Or on YouTube, you can check the comments below. 
All right, number one. Number one. Breathe to tone your vagus nerve. So if this can work for you, and it does work for some people, it is the easiest and most readily accessible thing, tool, fix, whatever. So your vagus nerve, which is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, it is the only source of innervation to your larynx. The parasympathetic nervous system is the, is the sister of the sympathetic nervous system. So it's the system that allows you to calm down and regulate. So it's the other, the other side of the sympathetic nervous system. So if you can make yourself breathe from your diaphragm, that low sleeping breathing. So however that shows up for you, if you've, if you've learned that you have to stick your stomach out, okay, maybe, but that might not be your body type. So find the way that you breathe when you sleep. That's your natural diaphragmatic movement and physical response to that nice, low parasympathetic breathing. So that is often really helpful. What you're, cause you're telling your body that it's calm, right? You're making it breathe in, a, in the same way that it does when you are calm, when it is calm. And you're, so it's getting the message, I'm calm. And there are some, there are some meditation practitioners who talk about stimulating your vagus nerve, or as they say, improving your vagal tone, which is another way of saying that, by allowing a beat or two to pass between each inhalation. So um, I've done this with my daughter who has, so gets very anxious and it's worked really well for her. So it's like you breathe in, you hold it for a beat and you breathe out and you hold it for a beat and you breathe in and you hold it for a beat and you breathe out and you hold it for a beat. So you can see, I'm not trying to take in a huge breath. I'm really doing sleeping breathing and I'm just letting a beat boom pass between each breath. So you could try that. And you do it for like two, anywhere from two to five minutes. I mean, hopefully it's closer to two, but um, I have seen this work. I think it's really great for some people. So give it a try. Another number two is reframe. So in the freebie article, which you will get if you put stage fright in the comments, there are two versions of this, but I want to share the one from neuroscientist Lisa Feldman Barrett. She says, that we can learn to assign different feelings and interpretations to our physical realities. Okay. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of weird, but so you feel yourself getting sweaty and you feel your mouth getting dry and you tell you, typically you're going to say, I'm about to go on stage. This is my experience. My mouth is dry. I'm getting sweaty. Therefore I must be having stage fright. But she says, you can start telling yourself a different story. Um, you can practice telling yourself that you are excited and anticipating a thrilling experience. And so the reason that your heart is beating fast and you're sweating is because you're really excited. And so she says it takes practice, um, but as, uh, as does visual, visualization, um, that you're probably familiar with and we'll get to, uh, but that reframing the feelings and giving them a new story can make a huge difference. Um, Wendy Martelli says, paraphrasing, um, fear is excitement without breathing. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's, that's a, a way to reframe it. What if you, right, exactly. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Wendy. All right, um, number three, sensory check. So this is another anxiety tool that does not have to be limited to just stage fright, but it's a really, but it works really well for stage fright. So, but you have to practice it again. You got to get good at it. So getting good at the sensory check is a really good uh, anxiety coping practice. So you think of five things you can see and you think them or you say them out loud, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And then you go do it again. And it, it brings you into the here and now. 
because that fear, as, as we know, fear is projecting outward, right? Or into the future. So in the case of the agonic neurological modality, it's about projecting it to your audience they, in, and into the future. They are going to do me harm right? So this, this anxiety coping mechanism brings you into the here and now where you are actually safe and nobody is trying to steal your bananas. So, <laughs> so that's a really nice thing to, to try. Uh, number four, visualize. So this is a thing that a lot of practitioners swear by. You want to visualize the thing that you believe and I'm sorry, visualize the thing you believe you can get the hang of and that will give you the outcome you want. So it might be, for you, it might be staring at adoring crowds in a stadium um, and holding them in the palm of your hand. It might be that. But it might be just as simple as visualizing a room full of people and seeing them covered in a pink mist and that mist is love and support. And you're reframing their, this group of people into people that are engulfing you in love and support and whatever you choose, it doesn't really matter. I, that was just a, a thing, just a thought, but whatever you choose, you need to do it regularly in order to experience the benefits. Number five, number five, beta blockers. <laughs> Better living through chemistry. Uh, beta, beta blockers are cheap. Although in the U.S. you do need a prescription for them. In a lot of countries you can just walk into your pharmacia and ask for them and they will hand them over. Uh, they block the effects of adrenaline in your system. A lot of famous performers take beta blockers. Um, but now, like any drug, this is not something a singer wants to take the very first time at their performance. You want to try it out at home first and see what the effect is on your voice and your singing. Because, you know, voices. Many performing artists and public speakers use beta blockers. Some performers uh, will take St. John's wort to help them with their stage fright. Um, my friend Elizabeth, I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember right name, her last name right now, I shouldn't have said. Anyway, famous performer takes St. John's wort every day to help with stage fright. Um, some people take THC in edible form. Uh, yeah, again, practice at home because it really dries some people up. There are herbal teas, there are herbal formulas that people swear by. So if beta blockers aren't your thing, there are other ways to live better through chemistry. So those are my five, five suggestions for you, which you can get if you um, put that in the, in the chat or check below if you're on YouTube. If, uh, thank you very much for being here with me today. I am Meredith Colby. Uh, don't forget to check my website for information about the upcoming NeuroVocal Method certification class. I will be here again next week, helping voice teachers create confident teaching and singing of CCM pop styles. You can find me right here on Facebook, YouTube, and at MeredithColby.com. Have a great week and be well and ask for what you need. And hopefully I will be better when I see you next. Bye-bye. <laughs>